Hi, I'm Rosemary Connolly with Miss Billion Art League, and we are here today in the studio of C. Mercedes Walls, who we call Kathy. And we're looking at her studio today and asking her some questions about her background and, and the art that she makes. And so, Kathy, will you give us a little bit about your background? Okay, I am not professionally trained I, or formally trained. I went to college to be a marine biologist and ended up with a degree in sociology and then departed into a 10-year career as a probation parole officer. But my upbringing was, I was always told that I would be an artist. I um, was supposed to go to Marseille to study under my aunt who had a art studio and a framing shop in Marseille. But um, I got the bug and said, nope, I'm going to be a scientist and changed all those plans when I was like 17. Yeah. So uh, I never really studied art formally, but always did it on the side to make a little extra money all through, like through high school and college and even raising my kids. I, I always did the art on the side. And then when I was 36, I retired from probation parole to open my art studio finally, which mm -hmm. had always been a dream. So. Wow, that's really interesting. Kathy, what inspires you? Um, scenes of everyday life, like just things that happen. I have a little um, Canon ELF camera that I carry with me most of the time, and I'll just see, like lighting is just right on something, I'll take it, or I'll see two kids fighting with a dog over a toy or something and you know you catch that picture but I really like scenes of people doing their thing like everyday stuff like on the job or just hanging out not 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 portrait art more genre of uh, everyday life. What's your medium? I know that you work in several so tell us a little bit about what you I, do. I I enjoy painting in oils, watercolors, and pastels. Not that fond of acrylics, but I'm kind of a, a pastel evangelist. I absolutely <laughs> love working with pastels. So I would say that would probably be my preferred medium, but I enjoy trying all sorts of stuff and new stuff and 3D stuff and um, just making art. It's just a lot of fun for me. And it helps you Trying something new helps you with the stuff you like. So it's really important to try something new and get out of your comfort zone. It makes you more creative. It kind of kicks in the creative juices. So tell me more about the pastels. What What is it about the pastels that you like so much? I like intense color. I always have. And pastels are one of the purest mediums when it comes to pigment and saturation and color. And uh, for me, they're easy to control. You can take them anywhere. Um, I like the, even if I'm working in grays and whites, I like the vibrancy and the variety of texture I can get with them. Um, so I just, yeah. as a medium, it's, it's also the only truly opaque medium. Mm -hmm. Even oil paints, people think of them as, but, but oil paints can be transparent, but you can, you can't possibly make a mistake with pastels. <laughs> you can always just go over it again. You know, just yeah. so it's it's forgiving and it's it's lovely. Uh -huh. So, is there a particular technique that you use, or do you vary that? It has evolved over time. I used to do my pastels, what they call a la prima, where you just kind of look and reproduce the color that you're looking at in real life. Um, but now I layer my pastels. I do a method where you, I don't blend and rub things in. Um, that one, there's absolutely nothing blended in that pastel, for example. It's just layers of strokes on top of strokes. And it gives you a vibrancy. It's, it's um, just a really cool way to, to mix colors. Interesting. What about brushes? What do you, what do you um, I, this is, Another reason why you should study <laughs> art formally before you get into it. I never bought a brush that cost me more than $17, and I still use my $4 brushes <laughs> that I have. 
I saw that. My husband made this. This is kind of just a funny thing. He made me this box to hold it in. <laughs> this is my $200 Ooh. paintbrush. And you're like, can it be? I did not pay that much for it. The store was going out of business. Oh, okay. Can you, can it really make a difference? And it really does. So it helps to have good tools. <laughs> but that said, um, I also have a lot. I still use my... 495 brushes that's too. awesome <laughs> and I still use my pastels that I had when I was 17 it's like a it was like cost me four dollars for this set of 24 <laughs> pastels and I love those so they last a long time yeah, yeah yeah what are the biggest challenges you've had in the realm of your art well um limiting myself to because I stay busy enough doing commissions um, when the economy crashed in 2008, I'd have to say artists are the canaries in the economic coal mine. <laughs> I've said that often. 2007, things started dropping off. So I started working as a substitute teacher to supplement because, you know, my income could cover health insurance. Um, so um, I was substitute teaching for quite a while because commissions just dried up and I didn't really have a lot of ins to local galleries mm -hmm. and people weren't buying art from the galleries anyway. So there was economically a rough time then. But then when uh, things started picking up for me, I knew that the economy was back. And so um, challenges, I would suppose, is organization. Mm -hmm. Organization and just Sticking on schedule when you work on commissions you have a lot of deadlines and that drives a lot of artists crazy a lot of artists don't like doing commission work for that reason um, it's kind of all I've known so there are times I kick myself because I was at the beach when I should have been painting I have a really good boss she lets me do whatever I want yeah. <laughs> That's great. that would be me yeah. I know you've already answered this question that you primarily work on commissions, but do you do work for yourself? Yeah, when I have, when I, that's not true. I would say when I have time, but I, sometimes I'll get inspired to do something of my own and I'll, the, I'll put the commission down for a while and I'll get off on some, uh, into some other piece of art. So yeah, I will do, artwork for myself like I'm trying a new medium or I'm or just I saw something or some color or something and it just inspires me to try something so I will do um, pieces of my own I think I probably one time I looked at it I think I paint about 35 paintings a year um, a lot of those somewhere in the 20s are commissions but then some of them are my own Kathy, what do you do when you experience artist's block? Does that happen? I think that's another thing about being a, a commission artist is that's not really a luxury you can indulge in. And it also helps that you're always busy. Mm. You've always got something going on. So there's kind of that one um, exercise that artists do where every morning they get up and they do even if it's a little picture they paint it because that helps to break an artist block well because I've pretty much always got something I have to work on um, I might have started with a painting of my own something that was in my head I don't like the way it's going so I get off doing something else get off the track and start working and then oh, wait a minute I can do this and then I can go back to it so I haven't really had that but I think it's because when you're working commission to commission you don't have that luxury yeah. you're always creating yeah that's true yeah, yeah. that's wonderful yeah. so so what's the best piece of advice you've been given oh, the best piece of advice I've been given is stop <laughs> because Step I get wrapped painting. up in because I get wrapped up in detail um I, you really do need somebody to tell you it's done. Walk away. <laughs> as far as my art, my grandfather told me to don't paint what you see, paint the colors. Mm -hmm. um, because your eye is going to trick you. So 
And the funny story there is I finished painting a painting of a uh, classic car. And by the time I was done, I stood back to look at it. And there I was with my camera in the bumper. I had never noticed that what I was painting was a self-portrait because I'm just Whoa. painting the colors reflected in the chrome. And when I finally looked at it, I'm like, oh, well, this is awful. <laughs> no, that's awesome. <laughs> but that's, he kind of, you know, just paint the colors. Yeah. And uh, yes, that would be wow. that's great. good advice that I got. Okay, so then what advice would you give to someone just starting out? Starting out, I would say, please get um, formal training. Uh, young people or their parents will come to me and say, well, uh, they don't really need to go to art school because they just will practice this and learn this the way you did. No, no, you need to get the basics. And if that's through classes, art classes, lessons, or formal art education, visual arts education, you need the basics to know what you're doing. I have like a 40 year learning curve that I don't wish on anybody. I'll mm -hmm. pick, all of a sudden somebody will explain one of the basics of color to me. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, I've been fighting this fact for 30 years. And now that I know this, it's so much easier. So um, I would say get, get formal training. Don't think that you're just going to, because you're such a good artist, you're gonna be able to do it. That's awesome. Is there anything finally that you would like to share? Well, just um, I'm amazed. I teach at the Art League and I'll have somebody come in that has never picked up a brush in their life, but now they have time to take a class or they, they just felt like they needed to and they blew me away. So I just think that People need to be creative. I think um, we sometimes get off into careers where you're kind of that creativity is stifled and then when it comes out, bam. So uh, be creative. Yeah. Kathy, I want to thank you for opening your studio today and allowing us to come in and see this wonderful space and to, um, to hear what you have to say about your art and, and your life. And so thank you so much for taking the time.